What the f No fing way. What the f boys? Are you fing kidding me? What's going on, YouTube? Got another video for you here today. Uh, I've got a lot of questions. Uh, there's a lot of content uh, out there on this, but I thought maybe I could try to consolidate all the info into one quick video. And this is the T7 Cemetery strat that everybody's running. Uh, comboed with abyss and then you can kind of uh, manipulate the the mapped uh, passive tree to, to your liking and put um, it, it, it's pretty versatile I guess you can run whatever mechanics you want with abyss whether it be legion or harbinger or strongbox or whatever the case is so I just wanted to go over real quick the atlas passive tree the scarabs the how we roll the maps uh, the compasses uh, the Atlas tree, all that, and try to just get it into one quick video, as well as sustaining the T7 maps so that you don't have to go out and buy them. I know that they're pretty expensive right now for just being T7s. So hopefully we can get through this pretty quick, and uh, and this will provide the info you guys need to run this strategy. It is absolutely insane. You know, we dropped a raw mage blood. We've been dropping stacks of divines and, and tons of currency. You know, you're usually dropping even just, you know, anywhere between 40 and 60 chaos a map. Uh, so it's absolutely insane, and it's a lot of fun. Like, it, it really is cool to see these loot explosions and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. So we'll start off right away with the maps themselves. These are T7 cemeteries. And basically, as you can see, that second line there says monsters fire two additional projectiles. That is the most important line on this. You don't have to double corrupt these. Obviously, it's better if you get eight mods and all that kind of stuff. They start getting pretty rippy, right? So you want to find a nice balance of monsters fire two, two additional projectiles, but that the map isn't so difficult that when you juice up the wild wood, you're not able to run it. If you're on a normal standard build and you're running, you know, T16 um, maps and you're able to get through those real easy and all that then you can juice them up as much as you want i'm personally on a magic find so there's not a lot of survivability on it so i basically look for that monsters fire two additional projectiles and then if you can get like you know added rare monsters or magic monsters all that kind of stuff is really good anything you can do to add more monsters to the map is a good thing but that line right there is the most important line on these maps and i'll show you how i roll them so what we do is this one's naked here. As you can see, this one, these already have them. They're all, you know, 75 to 78, 72 to 78 item quantity. So they're not crazy. They're not eight mods. You don't need these to be absolutely bonkers. The, the juice comes from the Wildwood and then the Abyss. So uh, how we roll these is we take our cartographer's chisels, 20%, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab some chaos and what we'll do is we'll it's you can do it in here but it's a little bit easier just to uh we're going to type in projectile right here so that it highlights and we don't have to necessarily uh keep an eye on it and look over it right so we didn't hit it on the alk and we're just going to hit it uh until it highlights right there so it highlights that one's pretty good right 88 percent item quantity it has more monster life and stuff but it has our two projectiles uh, and so again, this is very runnable. This is this is it right here. Additional projectiles. That is what you want. Straight up, you you need projectiles, right? So now all of our maps are ready to go. So let's take a look at the Atlas Passive Tree. So now, the certain the ones that you absolutely need are. This abyss right here, this adds more monsters. We are using Wandering Path. I'm not a huge enjoyer of Wandering Path. I, you know, I run Harbinger a lot, and Harbinger is much better being able to use the large passives. Right now, we're not running Harbinger as often. We have been trying it, and it, it does feel good. But fracturing arbs feel, or fracturing shards feel like they don't drop nearly as much as they have in the past. So it doesn't feel quite as good this league. Uh, so we are running uh, strong boxes, right? So we have uh, Enraged Strongbox. These are very cheap. They're only about 10 sextants this league, which equates to, I don't know, what is that? Like 50 Chaos. You know, often, most leagues, these are about a divine apiece. So this is really nice that, that these are that cheap. And then we run plus two additional strong boxes so that our maps corrupted and rare, our strong boxes are corrupted and rare. We run a Mirror of Delirium. And then we run um, uh, Beyond, okay? And then on the map device, we use 7th uh, Gate here, as you can see. 
So we will be, um, it gives us the option of having Abyss in the map device as well, right? So what we're going to do now is, like I said, you take all of the monster increase Abyss. And there's another Abyss node here, but the only reason you need to take any, you would just take these three right here. And the only reason you would need to take these three is if you're not using a Gilded Abyss Scarab. I recommend using, you know, even if you can't afford the other Scarabs, the Ambush, the Reliquary, and the Div. The Div, you can take it or leave it. The Brother's Gift doesn't drop as often as I think we'd like it to. Um, but again, you know, it's, I, you know, it's nice when they do, so... And it usually becomes worth it. But a Gilded Abyss, this is the most important one. Of the other three, you can run kind of whatever you want, whatever you can afford. Maybe nothing at all even. And you can just put, you know, fragments in there. Um, whether you guys knew this or not, if you throw the Sacrifice at Dusk, Midnight, Dawn, etc. in these add more quantity to your map so you could just simply just add these in it's much cheaper you know you drop these all over the place they're just sitting there as opposed to scarabs but i would recommend going with the gilded abyss scarab if possible right so again uh then we are specced into beyond as well as you can see you get a lot of benefit from that uh we do put one point here into ritual altars ritual altars this is this i learned this from fub gun give credit where credit's due uh, and I got a lot of this too is from all sorts of uh, content creators, you know, um, Sigurdha, you know, did a great job, and you know, so I've learned a lot from others, and I've kind of consolidated my plan into into this right here, right? So we take all the Beyond. Beyond is unbelievable this league. We take all the Abyss. Uh, these are massive, right? These add a lot of monsters, make a magic, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we take all the quantity and rarity nodes, all of the top line so that it increases our map modifiers. This this turns a two additional projectiles on our map into three. And then uh, we just creep in down here so the delirium fog never dissipates. And then we don't have to worry about, you know, all the other ones there. So... And what you can also do is if you don't want to use the delirium sextant, what you can do is you can take all of the uh, delirium chants, right, to, to spawn. And it spawns about three out of four times. It's just unfortunate when you don't get it that fourth time. But you would just creep down here to this and then take all these uh, these chants to contain a mirror of delirium. Those sextants are fairly expensive. So I will, until I had a lot of currency stacked up and I was able to run, I mean, literally you can run about 15 maps and then you have enough money to go buy whatever you need. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, but you can use these up until that point and just give yourself the chance to spawn a delirium mirror. And like I said, it spawns about three out of four times. Um, and then again, we have a little bit here in Ritual, just because again, Ritual goes crazy. And now this is a question that comes up a lot. How do you uh, unlock the seventh gate? What you need to do is you need to allocate all of these gateways, right? You don't have to, they don't have to be connected here. If you connect this one, then you can just apply this one, right? So these here, 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 and here, right? So you have to allocate all of those for seventh gate to work. And then it opens up all of the crafting devices or options that are available. Here's our abyss. Uh, it opens delirium, which we haven't been using. We still have our free one. I'm not even sure how much it costs. I'm guessing if it's this far down, it's it's pretty expensive, probably like 20 chaos or so. Uh, but so we're here on abyss. Uh, but as you can see, it opens up everything, right? So again, I'm going to reiterate this: is a question that comes up a lot. Seventh gate. This is the node that you want that will open up all of the crafting devices. And then we take this here. You can take it if you want. It does make it more expensive. However, it whatever you choose, if you choose Abyss, it's going to randomly apply, excuse me, one of the big nodes from that category, right? So that's it for the tree. You know, we have the strong box down here. Tree's, tree's pretty simple. Again, if you do not want to run strong box and you want to run legion uh, or harbinger or whatever, you can you can allocate your points how you see fit and run whatever activities you want. Breach is good, uh, etc. Whatever's going to add more mo uh, monsters, whatever scarabs you have, whatever you can really move it around. Again, abyss is the most important. Uh, beyond is very very good uh, but not the most important and then again you know we're on strong boxes and we've done a bunch of harbinger and stuff too so again just make sure you grab all of these abyss nodes that is the most important along with uh, the gilded abyss scarab once again i will reiterate if you're not using a gilded abyss scarab you do have to take these three passives right here 
so that you um, it turns your uh, you don't you don't get abyssal depths and you don't get a chest or more likely with this if you use the gilded scarab you will get a, a, a um, altar or whatever every single time aspire excuse me every single time so this is the most important uh, piece of the puzzle okay so that's it for that and uh, I think that pretty much sums it up um, let me think for a second I, I don't think there were there's really much more to it you just want to go in there and you know the the oh as far as the wildwood goes the wildwood now this might sound a little counterintuitive but the most important piece of this puzzle uh, as far as the wildwood goes is you want the purple wisps right purple is the most important then yellow then blue blue is still good obviously it's the currency one but to really juice up those abyssal spires you want the purple it'll add uh number one it adds rarity so you have a better chance of dropping your high tier uniques you know your your nice uh jewels and your mage bloods and your headhunters and all that kind of stuff so you combine the purple with reliquary scarab you're going to drop m more rare um uniques okay however what the most important part of it is is it adds additional projectiles to monsters so if you get a really juicy purple uh in the wildwood you're going to get an obscene amount of projectiles out of the spires and it's going to spawn a lot of monsters so again purple yellow blue that is the order that you want if you can get all three if you can get 2k of each your, ma your map is going to be absolutely insane but again if you can get 3k purple 1k yellow your map will look pretty good uh and then again obviously sometimes you know the the wildwood lets you down and you, you just don't get much out of it and those maps you know they are what they are they'll still be really good they'll still be juiced but the more purple you get the better it's going to be now as far as the spire itself if you have a very very powerful build what will happen is the spire will spawn and if you kill it too fast you will not get your monster so what you want to do is when the spire spawns you're going to do about a, a quarter to a half damage and then just run off and give it you know maybe kill some other things run a ritual nearby something like that let all the monsters spawn return back to the spire and then kill everything and and you'll have a huge loot explosion it's it's so much so much fun so that's about it again wildwood purple 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 it seems kind of interesting you know we don't usually stack a lot of rarity it's been a while in this game you know unless you go back to the old you know magic find strats you're typically stacking quantity which again on our gear we have a ton of quantity we have good rarity all that kind of stuff i think we're at about with, with our flask up we have 85 uh quantity and um or no i'm sorry we have 75 quantity and then about you know whatever that turns out to is right around 200 rarity so it's not it's not absolutely insane but you know we do have to sacrifice you know we're using uh, the defiance of destiny for some survivability when you know we could be using a quantity amulet or something like that which eventually we will uh, i just have some survivability things i need to figure out um but the build feels fantastic um the the strategy is unbelievable it's it's one of the most fun that this game has ever dropped so i definitely recommend trying it out if you have a few divines lying around you can go buy some of this this stuff uh you know definitely do oh and lastly okay so how do you sustain the maps this is this is important and this is a question that was coming up a lot so what you're going to do is after you know you've you've put your compasses on and everything like that what you're going to do is after you load your map right so you put your map in load it up and then when, once the portals have spawned, right? So once, uh, and I'll load in, let's just, we'll just throw in a, 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 a random map. So you, you put all your sextants in, you've got all your, I'm not gonna waste them now because I'm not gonna run the maps at this exact moment. So what we're gonna do, I still, I need some stuff uh, to go buy. Again, I'll be streaming all day. Let me throw this in there real quick. I'll be streaming all day today. So if you wanna pop by and check out the strategy or you have questions or something's confusing, you can just stop by the stream and uh, and i can explain it to you but what you would do is you would throw this in set all your stuff etc etc right you activate it once the portal spawn right what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to remove three right you're just going to put them over here take them out just remember to put them back in before your next map and now this will allow the t7 cemetery maps to spawn right the, the, if you have all of your your sto your stones in you it's very you drop very few maps 
However, if you take three of them out, you'll 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 you basically just need to do this once every four runs, and you will sustain your maps. You'll drop you know seven, eight, nine maps sometimes in one map, and then boom, you're good to go. And because we're not corrupting them and all that and wasting them, we don't really need we don't need an, you know an excess of them. We just need to get about four or five every every uh, four map rotations, and then we're good to go. And then again, once you're done with your map, put them back. Put your map in, run it, all the portals spawn, and then again, if you need more maps, do it again, right? And you take all three of them out. That's all you have to do. Very simple. Um, and again, you won't have to go buy them. You'll be able to sustain, do all that kind of stuff, and it's it's super helpful. So that's about it, guys. Again, uh, I tried to keep it as quick as possible. Um, if you guys have questions, come pop stop by the stream, post in the comments, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I appreciate all you guys. My streams have been going crazy lately. Um, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.